Hi, it's Greg Gornert, Vice President, Senior Investment Advisor at Canical Genuity Wealth Management and Gornert Wealth Management. Now, welcome to the show where we try to help you make sense of the financial world. Now, today in Canada, we just had the federal budget come down this week. And to help us dissect that and take a look at where things stand from a market point of view, I'm going to be joined by Canical Genuity Managing Director of Advisor Services, Kevin Vandermeer. Kevin, welcome. Hi, Hi welcome. Thanks. Hey. Thanks for having me again. Hey, I really appreciate you take, taking, taking the time just to walk us through a little bit, you know, from a high level, you know, market implications for the budget uh, in Canada. Just maybe walk through some of the highlights or lowlights, depending on your point of view, of what you see there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, uh, you know, the, I think the market was sort of looking for something between uh, 70 and 100 billion. And uh, it came in at the higher end of that number. So 101.4 is the spending. Uh, now, admittedly, that's over the kind of the next three years. And, um, you know, the, the big part of that, there's a couple pieces. One is, you know, this um, COVID relief. So the rent protection, the wage protection piece is in there. Uh, and then I think, you know, what's probably got the most headlines was the child care. Um, yeah. So they're going to spend $30 billion over the next three years on um, child care and sort of this national policy on child care and try to get, you know, the, the average um, a daily spend uh, for each child to $10 a day or per day. Um, and uh, so that was a big, that was a big number. There was also 17 billion in for green initiatives uh, there was a little bit in for tourism, uh, about a, a 1.2 or what, it might have been 1.5 in there for tourism. Obviously, that is an area that's been really challenged through COVID. So those are, yeah, those are probably the highlights, um, but definitely bigger than we thought. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's you know, our, our taxes are probably going up. It should be no surprise to anybody. I I, I would say that I, you know, I think that uh, that that's the first thing that uh, at some point um, they will come looking for the money. Uh, that that makes sense. Yeah. Right now we're um, we're here right now. Uh, I, I guess on the uh, uh, child care point of view, which is a, is a great program. Uh, however, that tends to be a provincial jurisdiction, so I can only imagine the kind of discussions that they're going to happen when they meet with the ten premiers and territorial premiers and how to allocate the money and how that horse trading is going to work out. So let's just walk just on the, um, the, the, the on the CERB program. Uh, they, they've extended that out, uh, I believe, is it September? Is that the, is that the date? Yeah. 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 So I think, I mean, I think, look, that's, I think it's the right thing to do. A lot of Canadians, yeah. you know, we're, we're in financial services and we've, we've weathered this storm pretty well, but there's certainly plenty of people and, and friends of mine that are, you know, still at home or, or not able to work. Um, so look, it's a, it's a big number. Um, you know, the part that I think, you know, we're all sort of wrestling with and, and sort of the underlining assumptions to the budget were that, you know, the recovery will come back quicker and that there'll be growth. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that still is, we have to see how this reopening of the economy goes. You know, if you look historically, that has been the case that there's been pent up demand. And if you look at, you say the Spanish flu and how, you know, economies opened, um, you know, there was a fair amount of spending. So if that happens and, and people come back into the, the workforce quickly and, you know, restaurants and open up, then I think, you know, this, this budget, you know, can sort of, uh, it, it makes sense and is not as big as the, as the headline number would suggest. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if the economy doesn't grow, if we don't open up as much, then it's it's really going to be somewhat challenged. I would say that on the on the child care piece, you know, if we can have more women participating in the workforce, that program, which is a you know roughly a third of the budget, yeah. will pay for itself. Like like the labor participation part yeah. um, will 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 pay for itself. So, you know, if you take a budget of 101 and you've got 30 billion allocated to child care that child care piece should should pay for itself and then you know you've got support which is about 13 to 14 billion in there 
that's the the extended um, CERB, if you will, uh, yeah. comp, you know, uh, subsidies, if you will. And, and that's a really big issue, you know, to uh, you know, to dual family incomes. I mean, that, that's that's tough. I mean, uh, you know, I've had kids, and and uh, you know, uh, it's you know, there's that point in your life when you have to make some trade offs that that. Uh, you know, childcare is not cheap in Canada, so anything we could yeah. do to help that out, uh, you know, I think is a, is a great thing. Um, still want to see how the provinces are going to negotiate since it's their jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. It's all going to turn out. It's never quite as simple as it sounds in my experience. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, for sure. Interest rates, I mean, a lot of this is predicated. Everything's kind of fine as long as the economy uh, reopens. and We have the expansion that we kind of... Th- you know, I think at some point we're probably going to get anyways. Um, but uh, the other uh, piece of this is falling on is that uh, interest rates uh, stay, you know, um, uh, low or um, at least, um, you know, not uh, don't spike over the next little uh, period. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, like it. We, we've I've, I've read quite a bit around kind of how we're going to repay for all this and. And, uh, you know, your viewers as well as investors probably won't like the answer. But, um, you know, as long as as long as inflation stays above um, interest rates, then um, you can kind of, you know, um, inflate this away a little bit. And that's really the only way that we're going to really kind of pay it back. So, you know, we're our economy is tied very much to the U.S. Um, The U.S. Federal Reserve has told you know, investors in the market that they're going to keep rates lower for longer. They're going to let the economy run hot. Um, And all of that, you know, doesn't bode well for, for fixed income or or bond holders. Um, So I think, yeah, I think rates will stay, you know, lower. um, And we should expect inflation, you know, to, to, to run hot. And, you know, there's been lots of, um, lots has been written about that. You know whether you're paying the same amount for um, a smaller package, so you you know there's a reduction in how much you get for the same price. So that's obviously inflation. Um, and then you know you're seeing it in all kinds of areas. Um, you know we, we've we've had good employment numbers out this morning, but um, you know I've read where you know people are getting signing bonuses to to you know work at at um, you know, McDonald's and some of these fast food um, places where they're just trying to get people to come back to work. Um, so signing bonuses and, you know, you being in um, British Columbia would be very close to the lumber yeah. uh, trade, more, closer than we would say in Ontario. I've seen but a the lot, price heard of lots lumber, of stories there, yeah. Yeah, the, the price of lumber is, is, is skyrocketing and obviously that just trickles through the housing market in, in lots of other areas, so um, you know there's going we're, to be we're, inflation. We're even seeing an OS. We're even seeing an OSB, which is kind of you know basically the wood chips that are kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. together. They glue I the mean, that stuff, together and, well, and that stuff yeah. is, is, is the prices are up. I, I know that uh, uh, you know a, a number of people I know in, in the lumber industry. I mean, you know, it's 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 crazy the prices that are going out there right now. Um, so. Um, there is inflation in the system, anecdotally from from what I've seen. But what it means at the end of the day, whether it's just transitory or whether it's uh, you know something more foundational, um, I'm yet to be yeah. convinced yet. So. Yeah, I mean, I think I think inflation is definitely coming, and I think rates are going to stay lower, and it's yeah. going to be bad for savers, specifically fixed income savers, unfortunately. It's, yeah, and. I, 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 and when you think of it, though, historically, when things like this happen, that, that's kind of the point and how you get yourself out of something like this. You do kind of yeah. make your way out and, um, you know, which is generally good for markets, um, equity markets in particular, because really there is no alternative. And you're, and you're back to that conversation that we've been having for the past couple of years. Not that there aren't bumps in the road, but um, that speaks to it. So as far as showstoppers from, from a market point of view in, in the budget, uh, did you see anything that uh, kind of caught your eye that uh, we should flag, or um, is that about it? Um, not really. I mean, there was some discussion around the, um, you know, I think I think the government's looking at some sort of national pharma, um, yep. you know, drug benefit, and that kind of got pushed to the side. I think, you know, s- some of the things that, that people were maybe a little bit disappointed with were just that the government would do more 
in the area of housing and affordable housing. And uh, they just didn't in this budget. Um, you know, so I think those were really the two that maybe people were looking for additional color on or more commentary on and, and just really didn't, especially in the area of housing. Like they did put a tax on homes that were empty, um, yeah. but that really doesn't help, say, the first time home buyer. Uh, and, and I think that's m maybe probably the biggest disappointment, I think, in this budget. Um, so, uh, you know, if you're a young couple you know, looking for your first home, that that's probably the biggest disappointment. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, it, it was, um, I mean, despite the big number, uh, I think pretty much everything's been covered on that. So I don't, think, from my point of view, I don't see any real showstoppers from as far as the uh, the markets are concerned for us and for investors. But um, at some point, yes, they will be coming for the money. Um, that <laughs> yeah, uh, death and taxes don't go away. Um, yeah. Anyways, why don't we uh, drop it off there? But uh, really appreciate you joining us uh, today for a little bit just to walk over your thoughts on a high level of budget, Kevin Vanderbeer. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you.